In this short video, we will give an example uh, illustrating how a simple physics problem can be modeled by an initial value problem, an IVP. So we're going to write down a model for a, a physics problem, which will give rise to an IVP. The IVP will consist of a first order ordinary differential equation, so a first order ODE. which we will solve by the method of separation of variables. So that's the order of business in this video. Uh, we will look at a simple physics problem. It will give rise to a first order ordinary differential equation, and we're going to solve it by separation of variables. So here's the problem we want to model. We will be given a mass, an object with mass m, and that object will be on a table, uh, and it will be subject to two forces. Uh, it will be subject to a constant force of one pound pulling it to the right, and it will also be subject to uh, friction or air resistance. That is some drag force uh, which will uh, impede its uh, movement and so uh, slow it up or pull it to the left, so friction or air resistance. Those are the two forces, and we will assume that the friction force is proportional to the square of the velocity. Okay, so let's model it now. We'll uh, do it via a, a small diagram as well as the differential equation. So here's our table, it's supposed to be flat, and here's the mass, which we think of as a point mass, and it's subject to two forces. The constant force pulling it to the right, F equal 1, and the drag force slowing it down, uh, proportional to the square of the velocity, minus because it's impeding the motion, uh, V squared because it's proportional to the square, and alpha is a constant of proportionality, a positive number. That's the diagram. What's the differential equation? It comes from Newton's uh, first law that F equals MA. Uh, so A is the derivative of the velocity, so m dv dt is the sum of the forces, the force pulling to the right, and the force slowing it down. So there's the initial, uh, the differential equation, and since, uh, we, let's assume that it starts at rest uh, at time t equals zero, so our initial data would be v of zero is equal to zero. So here's our IVP that we got by modeling this uh, physical problem, uh, first order ordinary differential equation, and a piece of initial data. And now we want to solve that uh, IVP by the method of separation of variables. So let's recall the method of separation of variables. It says that if you have a first order ordinary differential equation, y prime equal f t y, uh, which in which the variables happen to separate. That is, you can write the function of two variables, t, f, t, y, as a product of two functions, g of t, h of y, where, as the notation indicates, g is a function of t alone and h is a function of y alone. That is, the variables separate. If you can do that, then you can basically integrate the equation uh, and get a solution. Here's how it goes. So you write dy dt equals g of t h of y separate the variables so bring the h on the left hand side so let's write this as 1 over h of y equal g by dt equals g of t and now integrate both sides with respect to t And let's suppose you can do the integral, so you can get some function capital G of t, uh, let's say a constant of integration. Uh, capital G has the property that its derivative is little g. And suppose you can also uh, integrate the left-hand side. Incidentally, of course, this is the same thing as the integral of 1 over h of y dy by the chain rule. And suppose you can find a function, let's call it capital H, with the property that the der its derivative is 1 over h. 
then you've solved your differential equation. The solution is capital H at Y is capital G at T plus C. So there's a general solution of your uh, differential equation. Uh, the issue is uh, twofold. One, can you actually do the integrals? You may or may not be able to do them in closed form in terms of elementary functions. And even if you can, you may or may not be able to solve this equation for y explicitly. So again, two potential problems with the method. Um, you may not be able to do the integrals, and you may not be able to solve the implicit solution for an explicit uh, function of y. Nevertheless, at least in terms of antiderivatives and implicit functions, you can always solve a, a, a first-order equation in which the variables are separate. Next, let's apply the method of separation of variables to the first-order equation that arose from our model. So that's m v prime equals 1 minus alpha v squared. And it should be completely evident that that's a separable equation. There's no t whatsoever. So let's uh, separate the variables. And we'll do that as follows. We will write uh, m v over 1 minus alpha v squared equals dt. The variables are now separated. Uh, we have to integrate uh, both sides. Right-hand side is trivial. We just get t plus c. And the left-hand side uh, is a partial fractions problem. So we have to break up the quotient m over 1 minus alpha v squared into a sum of terms where the denominator is factored. And uh, that's not too hard to do. If you do that, you wind up with uh, m over 2 times the sum of two terms, 1 over 1 minus the square root of alpha v plus 1 over 1 plus the square root of alpha v. Now let's integrate that. So if we integrate uh, with respect to v, of course, uh, we wind up with m over 2. And we're going to get two logarithmic terms. So in fact, it's going to be the logarithm. Uh, because of the minus sign here, it's going to turn out to be a quotient. 1 plus the square root of alpha v over 1 minus the square root of alpha v. And there's a square root of alpha that comes in. It's 1 over the square root of alpha. And that's equal to t plus c. Then we use our initial data. v of 0 equals 0. If you put uh, t equals 0, you get a c here. And over here, you just get 0. Because if v is 0, you have log of 1, which is 0. And so c is 0. And so our equation uh, is now m over 2 times the square root of alpha times the log of the quotient, 1 plus the square root of alpha v over 1 minus square root of alpha v equals t. Okay, there's our implicit solution. But in fact, you can solve that for v. Uh, you bring the m over 2 square root of alpha to the right, exponentiate both sides. Uh, cross multiply and solve for v. There's a little bit of algebra there, but if you do it, you wind up with v equals 1 over the square root of alpha times the exponential of 2 square root of alpha over m t minus 1 divided by same exponential. plus 1, which um, is not hard to see by factoring out uh, both top and bottom and e to the square root of alpha over uh, m t, uh, uh, right, t uh, that this is the same thing as 1 over the square root of alpha times the hyperbolic tangent of the square root of alpha t over m. So we can graph that function. It looks something like this. Starts out at 0, increases, and then levels off at 1 over the square root of alpha. 
So it's a monotonically increasing function, which levels off at infinity at 1 over the square root of alpha. Um, so the velocity of the mass gradually increases from 0 up to 1 in the limit. Um, you might notice that the curve actually has an inflection point, And I'll let you do the calculus to actually find out where it is. So to conclude, we had a physical problem, a mass on a table moving subject to two forces, a constant force to the right, a variable force to the left. It gave rise to an ordinary differential equation. Here it is, which we solved by the method of separation of variables, all of this uh, math here. And we got an explicit formula for the solution curve, and we were able to draw it. So there's a, an illustration of a first-order ODE model, which is solved by separation of variables.